made things tricky. Okay. There we go. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another video on my channel. My name is Dion, and you're watching Reptiliatus. Friends, many of you have been joining this channel thanks to the Project Mini Dragon series. Many of you have found this channel out of love for red-eyed crocodile skinks, but in today's video, you're not gonna believe what has happened. A few months ago, one of my subscribers emailed me with a proposition that I truly am still humbled to the, what do I say, like, I just can't believe it. It's tr it's just the purest form of generosity. I still don't know. I'm like I'm dumbfounded. I have this level of generosity and attachment. Well, friends, one of my dear subscribers named Mark sent me an email over on my business email and asked me if I would like to adopt his pair of red-eyed crocodile skinks named Heidi and Zero. These animals have been in his care for quite some time and he mentioned that he hasn't really been having any success breeding them, but after coming across what I'm doing, felt that they would have a better opportunity in my care to potentially breed. And he literally wanted nothing for them. He was offering me the animals for free, out of love for the animals, out of love for the mini dragon project. Mark, thank you so much. This is truly such a kind act of generosity and I just want you to know how much I appreciate it. I didn't take things for granted. Of course I offered to pay for shipping. I even wanted to send him a card and he said that wasn't necessary. I just, yeah man, thank you so much. It's just so kind of you. So today, we have the animals, they've arrived. Thanks to Reptile Express shipping, hopefully safely, I'm sure. Yeah, let's unbox them now and get them situated into the new enclosure. So excited to meet these two lovely skinks and introduce them to you all as well. All right guys, so here's the box. I flipped the label because I don't want anyone to know where I live. Sorry, ladies. <laughs> all right, let's see. I'm so excited. I kind of made things tricky. Okay. Here we go. Hello there. Oh my goodness. You guys are huge. <laughs> Hi, buddy. They're just like, uh. What is happening in here? Okay, so you guys can't really see them that well, probably, but uh, <laughs> they're big skinks. It's funny, you know, people don't realize a lot of the imports are really nowhere near full grown, and I think they get pretty big over time. It's kind of like a toke, dare I say. Like, you give them time to grow and they get huge. Do you see the size of this animal? I'm assuming this is the male here. This is a beast of a crocodile skink, holy. Okay, you can see that they're both alert and well, which is what we like to see. Sorry, that's the plastic, that's not them. Even though they possess vocal cords. Cave in, so they yeah, yeah, you're okay, you're okay. Okay, friends, so here is one of the crocodile skinks. It's kind of looking a bit annoyed. I don't want to startle them too much. Looks like Mark uh, used some paper towel and a bit of cocoa core cleaning, uh, container to back them. So you can see there. Again, I don't want to scare them too much. I'm just going to pop the lid back on and then move them into the enclosure, maybe clean them off a little bit first. And again, so I think this is the female most likely. I think. Hello. Yeah, definitely. Must be. Hello, Chunky. Hope you're carrying eggs. Maybe you're just a chunky girl. How are you? Are you Heidi? This is Heidi, everybody. Isn't she cute? All right, guys. Oh my goodness, this is so awesome. Mark, thank you so much. They are such beautiful skinks. I mean, look how big they are. They're really a good size. All right, let's uh, again get those lids back on and move them into their new home so as not to disturb them. That's gonna be really important right now. They've had sort of a long journey, well, at least a day, so uh, don't need it to be any more stressful than it has been already. 
Now, in the event that you somehow missed my video up above on how I designed the enclosures you're about to see here, let's go through it one more time to see how we set up the enclosure for these red-eyed crocodile skinks. Ready and go. All right, everybody, so we have our enclosure. The first thing we're gonna do is peel off labels, prepare it, got our false rock here that'll form the barrier between water and land areas. Now we're going to create the land drainage area barrier. We're gonna use some egg crate and filter floss here. What we're going to do is attach the two using quite a few zip ties, and this will prevent substrate from falling through into the water feature and underlying drainage area. Once everything's locked in place, we're gonna cut all the ends off the zip ties to clean it all up, and voila, we'll have the drainage ready. Next, we're going to measure up the barrier with the drainage laid over top so we know where it needs to be situated. And then once that's done, we're gonna add hydroton to the enclosure that'll serve as support to lay that drainage platform over, as well as some mechanical filtration because it's very porous in nature and will help harbor beneficial bacteria that'll support the nitrogen cycle in the water. Now we're going to make some terrarium putty. This is a cat litter I used, it's called Odor Buster, and it's just a pure dried clay. What we're going to do is mix a few parts of substrate we're using with a larger portion of the clay and a bit of water. Then you're going to take this mixture and really knead it in your hands. Imagine it's some type of thick dough. You want everything to be mushed together. If necessary, add more water. You want it to have the consistency of some sort of Play-Doh, if you will. And it's gonna take a while to get there. You don't wanna see the individual granules of the litter. You want it to all look like a consistent brown material. Very clay-like. Now we're going to take the terrarium putty and use it to close the space between the sides of the tank and our barrier. So this will secure it in place and ensure that no substrate falls through and it stays. It's practically waterproof. It's not gonna fall apart in the water. Now that everything's situated and locked in place, it's time to add our substrate. Want to put a nice thick layer on here because crocodile skinks do enjoy digging around the enclosure. By now you've noticed that one of my favorite plants to use in these builds is pothos. It's a very hardy plant, it grows quickly and adds a lot of cover for the animals because they're very shy. Funny enough, the more cover they have, the more secure they feel and the more likely they are to come out in the open knowing that they can dart away and hide again. Here I'm placing quite a few pieces of cork bark as well as a few hollows for them to hide in as well. Okay friends, we're getting there. We're gonna install our filter next, add our water, and then turn it on. In preparation for the skink's arrival, we're going to be adding quite a bit of beneficial bacteria to help jumpstart our nitrogen cycle, as well as a bit of water conditioner. And now we're going to add our river stone that has been pre-washed to remove dust. Lastly, I'm adding some plant cuttings to the water feature as well as more pothos cuttings and this will further benefit the nitrogen cycle in removing nutrients from the water. I think the skinks are going to love this enclosure when they arrive in some time. Okay friends, so since the last video, I've been kind of focusing on community-based attributes and I really love the discourse that was created from my last question of the day. So for today's 
question of the day. I'd like to ask you all, what was a really special moment involving generosity in the hobby that you experienced? Whether it was choosing to be very generous and giving, or you were the recipient of someone else's generosity. I'd love to know in the comment section down below, so let me know. As always, I'll give you a comment a heart. And then we can also engage in a little bit of a conversation. For me personally, I've clearly demonstrated how generous people have been in the hobby towards me. And this is one of the real big examples. Whether it's giving extra feeders or other things, there's a lot of generosity out there. So I'm curious to know what your experiences have been. Awesome. All right guys, so we have the two crocodile skins here now. This is uh, Zero and Heidi. I'm pretty sure this one here is Heidi. As I mentioned before, you can just tell by the smaller head and you can see like the helmet like shape of this individual is much larger. So this must be zero, the male. It might be hard to see in perspective, but these are some of the largest crocodile skinks I've ever seen. I'm stoked to weigh these now and see how much they weigh because honestly, they're enormous. Mark mentioned that he's owned Heidi for 12 years in his care and he originally purchased her as a wild caught female. So that just tells you that we know so little about these animals. Like, look how big this animal is. Can you see this? This is such a large crocodile skink. She's enormous. Now I will say, I do think she could use like a little bit of a diet, unless she's ovulating, then that would make sense, but she's so beautiful. And the thing I love about crocodile skinks is though they have a very distinct appearance. No two have the same face. Uh, I feel like maybe it's just me uh, interacting with my animals a lot. I can really see that each individual has a unique appearance and it's something so wholesome I love about these critters. So we'll take a good look here at zero. I mean. He is enormous. Have you ever seen a red-eyed crocodile skink this big? I thought Sappy was big. This guy is huge. Like, look at the size of this animal. Absolutely massive. Mark said they barely fit in these containers, and I agree with him. Uh, they were comfortable, I'd say. They had enough room, but holy camoly did well, Mark. I'm just so honored to have these animals in my care now. Hi, buddy. I think what we'll do is uh, we'll clear out one of these containers, rinse both animals off a little, and then weigh them. And then we'll have document of that and they'll go straight into their new enclosure. Okay, so we have our scale here. I turn it on, set to grams. We will set that like that. I weigh the male first. This is zero. He is huge, everybody. Like, just enormous. Wow. 46 grams. You're a big boy, buddy. Just to give you context, some of the croc skinks that aren't doing well were weighing 12 grams. I mean, that's a very sickly skink. But yeah, 46 gram. Male skink. Okay, now we got Heidi. This is beautiful Heidi. We'll see how much she weighs. You ready? 39. Beautiful girl. Isn't she beautiful? Okay, let's get them into their home, guys. It's been growing in for some time and, and uh, it's ready for them. Okay, friends, so this is Heidi and Zero's enclosure. It's all set up. Same way as the others, same way as the others. If you are wondering how we set all those tanks up, they grow in really nice. And uh, yeah, the animals seem to do so well in them. So you got your wood and the pothos takes over over time. So I think they're gonna do really well in here. There's so many layers of wood for them to hide under, to nest under, hopefully to produce eggs under and raise their offspring. We have our mechanical filtration here. More surface area for biological filtration is provided down below with all the clay, hydroton, and the pothos will hopefully root a bit better in the uh, river stones. And that will also help with some biological filtration. So setup's looking good. 
Well, let's get these animals into their new home. Okay, buddy. So we got them here. We're gonna go ahead and put Zero in first. Here you go, mister. Welcome home. Hey, old bud. That never takes so long to find their way into the enclosure. Okay, Heidi. Hi, girl. It's a cute name you chose, Mark. I'm honored to keep her. Hi, Heidi. Yeah, you look very cautious. Let's get you home. Okay, girl. And there we go. We're gonna let them do their thing and uh, check on them in a week or so, I think. Here you have it, friends. The Project Mini Dragons has grown by a pair, everybody. So we have these guys, these guys, these guys, these guys, and these guys. And I cannot wait to give you guys an update on the skinks because they've been getting treated as you know. And let me tell you, I have nothing but good news to give you all. So stay tuned for that video, most likely next week since treatment is over and we can give a solid update on them. Awesome. Well friends, there you have it. I sincerely hope you enjoyed watching today's unboxing video. Mark, thank you so much for this pair of beautiful crocodile skinks. I promise to take really good care of Zero and Heidi. I also want to take this opportunity to thank my newest patron over on the Patreon platform, Rachel. Thank you so much for your support, Rachel. It means the world to me that you'd like to support Reptiliatus channel with your monthly contributions. There's tons of cool perks you've unlocked through that process as well, and I look forward to getting to know you better on the platform. If anyone else is interested in learning how to support the channel, you can become a patron for as little as $2 a month. Before we wrap up today's video, I also want to take the time to acknowledge today being Veterinarian Appreciation Day. I think we should appreciate our animals' vets every day, but seeing as it's the special day, I'd like to give a huge thanks and show of gratitude to my animals' vet, Dr. Brown, for all the hard work and dedication he puts towards caring for my pets. Thank you so much, Alec. I really appreciate everything you do for my animals. Thank you for taking the time to even film appointments. You mean a lot to my pets and me, and I'm thankful to even call you a good friend. So, thank you, thank you. I think it's also super important to acknowledge the hard work and dedication of the veterinarian technicians as well as the secretary staff and everyone else contributing to the workforce in the vet clinic. Thank you so much for each and every one of you's contributions to taking care of our beloved pets. With that being said friends, I want to thank you all so much for watching today's video. Can't wait to see you all next week for our next few. Take care everybody, have an awesome weekend.